dreams Everyone is sure About who they are Aside from me Cause I'm a restless man No, I don't sleep, I don't sleep Yeah, I'm a restless man No, I won't sleep, I won't sleep Up show. I'm here with my co-host Leo Manahan, and that was our live performance, first live performance of the evening by 21st Avenue Band, Austin Bowden and Dayton Jans. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. How are you all doing tonight? Oh. I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty good. Feeling yeah. pretty good. Yep. Yeah. So um, before we go to anything else, what is the story behind that song? Don't sleep. Oh, you don't I, uh, sleep. <laughs> I kind of have a bit of an insomnia problem. Ever since I was oh. a kid, I'm like, I don't know what it is, but as soon as nighttime comes, I just cannot shut my mind off. I don't know whether it's about music or the shows we're going to do, or I'll have a song idea, and sometimes I either go, well, do I sit here and record the song idea, 
even though I got to get up in six hours. Sometimes that's just a better move, though, because <laughs> I'll sit there and fester on it, and then I just don't get any sleep. Yeah. So it was like it's like a real problem for me. Yeah. So I guess you wrote that song in the wee hours of the morning. Usually, or yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's when I get most of my creativity, I think. And then sometimes I'll wake up the next day and be like, "Oh, that was." <laughs> but a lot of the time it's pretty good and I'm like you know what that's it and then Dayton wrote the uh, intro to that song oh it did and that's what kind of what inspired most of it yeah it's really good yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty sick uh, like originally it was written a lot more ambient really spaced out because mm -hmm. um, I, I worked at this camp and we had this uh, they had this old lodge that's kind of like not in use anymore and they had this big empty dining hall and there was nothing in there just a really great like probably the best acoustics I've heard in some random building but uh, just sat there sometimes in my free time and I was working there and just played and I came up with this like nice line It was very slow and then Austin like when I played it for him He's like oh that fits for this piece of this song mm -hmm. and then he sped it up a little bit and then mm -hmm. it's a pretty catchy tune I find So in the middle of the night Austin was calling you hey I got an idea I liked that idea you had when we were jamming and I had him record it and send it to me just a little yeah. bit yeah. And I just yeah I had a bit of the song worked out already and then it just came into place really nicely. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was the, that's the title track of the album, and it's like, it set the tone. I've actually um, listened to that song before on um, the uh, Lethbridge Musicians. You posted that, right? Yeah, or we posted it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the very first song yeah, with our lyric that, video. I've ever, yeah. that I've ever yeah. listened to, and I'm like, wow, these guys are good. They gotta have no more show, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, um, you also played that um, when you performed at the... Um, Pops Hub on the Pops, West Side, yeah, right? for our that was for our debut for the album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We released the I album there, a month yeah. before, but for the for the C D release, you know, yeah. the hard copy, yeah. Yeah, I have that C D, yeah. Yeah. I got one. Me too. That day, yeah. <laughs> With all your autographs. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> That's really fun. I like doing that a little bit. <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit better. Gets into that rock star. Yeah, I feel like a rock star <laughs> that yeah, it's like three people come up for autographs and you're like you get an ego, right? <laughs> you know, one's your dad, one's, one's your mom, yeah. then your grandma. Yeah, then your best friend's like, sign my shirt. Talk to someone. If they, are, if they aren't showing up, how are you going to sign anyone else's autograph? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to practice it. I got pretty good at it. Absolutely. So, all right. Um, <laughs> who would you say some of your biggest influences were, too? Because I kind of felt a bit of like a Surf and Stevens kind of like vibe from your music a bit there. Oh, like like, like that folky type of stuff. Folky, folky stuff, we, yeah. Uh, we, like, our, we had a three-piece. Um, we all had kind of... Austin and I is kind of similar, but like we bit, had... Yeah pretty different influential pieces like mm -hmm. I like a lot more like the softer like alternative like indie rock like yeah some other like Pearl Jam just, type of stuff yeah uh, well indie rock he's talking more like Mac DeMarco yeah oh yeah DeMarco, DeMarco, like that kind of stuff like, like Saint yeah Saint Casey Saint Elephant Saint. yeah Casey you know? Elephant. Yeah. I'm a huge Chili Peppers fan, too. Huge Chili Peppers. I mean, everyone. Yeah, he's always so yeah. right? It's right. A, you can hear that in some of the songs, <laughs> oh, too. Yeah, 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 there's a bit of Chili Peppers yeah. in Huge Coldplay too. fan as well. Okay. Yeah. What, the only one. The one and only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The one and only Coldplay fan. Yeah. But, like, yeah, so, like, uh, so, Reese, the drummer, who's now not no longer in the band, but he was he was a big metal head. Yeah, big metal head. Loved mm -hmm. metal and EDM, surprisingly. He loved metal and EDM, and the, that was it. Nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> those things are the only thing those two have in common, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, so Wait, yeah. if you're a percussionist, yeah. you like that stuff. You like yeah. funk, too, a little bit. It's what he learned, mostly. Mm -hmm. That's where it all comes from, in a sense, too. Yeah. Right? Funk's fun. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I liked... I, I grew up on blues and folk. Mm -hmm. my, my papa made me listen to that as a kid. I didn't so quite like it at first, but I grew into it. B.B. King, all that type of stuff? I that's why I've been recently studying. Oh, really? I've been okay. watching how he plays a little bit lately, and I kind of trying to. <laughs> how old were you when you first started writing music? Writing music was the first thing I started to do. I was when I was about when nine. you were like six months old. The, the <laughs> well, first I guess thing you started. I played to guitar do a little bit, but it was always like I played walking. guitar a little bit, but it was like you know Iron Man by like Black Sabbath, yeah. things like that, like pretty simple stuff. Smoke on the water. Smoke on the water. Smells like Teen Spirit, and then. Uh, so you're like nine years old, you said? Well, that was when I was like four or five, and wow. then. Uh, I nev then I never really picked and it up. And then I played Stairway at 6 or something like that. Like, no, I didn't, st I didn't learn Stairway to Heaven until I was like 18. Because <laughs> I just didn't, because I, I knew it was like the song everybody knew. But yeah, when I was about nine, I asked my grandfather who can play really well. Yeah. I was like, can you teach me how to play? And he, he got excited because he loves to play. It's his favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, so I learned pretty quick. You know, he taught me the simple stuff, G, D, you know, C, A, yeah. A major, things like that. Chords, yeah. The yeah. main, you know, the, the yeah. ones you learn first. Mentals. And I just started writing songs. And I liked writing songs a lot more than learning songs at the time. And I learned, you know, I, I've learned a lot more now that I've started learning other people's music and using their influences mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Personally, my influences would be like, I don't know, like Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Tragically Hip is in there for me. Okay. I write a lot of my stuff a little Tragically Hip-ish. And then we change it. Then Dayton brings in his like uh, indie thing and then yeah. and then it turns when, when Reese would add like, 
like the metal vibe to it a little bit. Well, as you said, there's definitely like, own world. Yeah. You know, and that can't sleep song, there's definitely a bit of hip in there for sure, like from just like the way you sing it. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I like to add like a bit of that like yeah, Gord Downey yeah. like uh, <laughs> sometimes it adds like a little bit of a brado at the end of things. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He likes that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Nelson's also a huge Glorious Sons fan. Glorious well. Sons, yeah. 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 What That's about you? Bad. How old were you when you started playing the guitar? Oh man, when I first started playing I was like I think I was eleven or ten. Uh, I grew up in like a tiny town, nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. In the winter I played lots of like just for fun hockey. We only had a natural ice rink, so it was like melts during the summer so you can't do any skating so like a guitar was like my thing to do because my brother uh who's four years older than me learned how to play guitar i went to the same teacher for a couple of years uh, that he took and then from there i was like you know i'm probably just better off if i just teach myself now you know it's a lot easier and uh, yeah she was a great teacher and what was her uh, name uh sharon Forsyth was her name uh, is your music teacher yeah she was my music teacher uh she taught me all the basics and just such a great teacher and such a sweet lady. She still talks to me and now and again. But That's nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The other day it was my birthday and she made a post and she's like, every time some one of my students wants uh, has a chili pepper request, I think of you. I'm just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. This kid <laughs> learned a lot of chili yeah, pepper sure. songs. Yeah, and then from there I just uh, never really went into like the whole like writing lyrics thing. I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure that thing out. I try to push him every once in a while. So like, hard. We'll, we're, like, like, we'll try to write songs together and I'll be like, all right, now yeah. you come up with this lyric for this yeah, part of the song. Like, <laughs> I'm more naturally an instrumentalist than I am a, a vocal, yeah. or like a lyricist. Well, I liked poetry growing up. Like, yeah. I was yeah. that. like I like to have like deep thoughts. And there was a lot of there was a certain point when we first started when I was a kid. A lot of it would be kind of like tragic, right? Like I like to pick like stories when I write. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't have to be like real. Like I write a little more from my own perspective nowadays. But like when, I, when we first started out, I was writing like stories and stuff like that, and it would just be completely random things, whether they were sad. Yes, we're all were poets here, all four of us, even Jesse. Yeah. So I'd sit there, yeah. I'd kind of write poet, a little bit of poetry, and then I'd put it to music or whatever. But Yeah, yeah most uh, most really good musicians are good poets, too, yeah, because mm-hmm. that's, that's where it comes from, the inspiration, right? Yeah, and then you just absolutely. kind of, like, the music is, like, the feeling that you add to mm-hmm. to the uh, to the words. So, yeah, and sure. then yeah, yeah, just another dimension that you add on to it. Comes out as a, yeah. a f- your form of art, which is your songs, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, you got to write something and go, what does this want to be? Mm-hmm. What do these words want to be? How do they want to sound? How do they want to be presented? And then then you get songs like that where Dayton writes a riff that just fit the, fit the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't you yeah. write that um, that rap song that you performed with <laughs> Hayes yeah, at nice. the Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, it was the same <laughs> spur of the moment. It was the same sort of thing. And I just wrote the poet or the poetry down. I was like, okay. I was I surprised. Was I was like, okay. whoa. Well, here's some music. Okay, let's see if these words fit. And, you know, kind of, I guess something like that. That's, yeah. how, do, that's right? how you do it. So right. it's not quite as live. And we can't really, like, when it comes to hip-hop and stuff, since you're taking something pre-recorded, you can't really say, let's take this chord and turn it to a G major or something <laughs> instead. Right? Like, we have to try to really meld to our music a lot more than we meld the music to us, which yeah. is kind of one of the part of the one one sort of different aspect of it. About hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think about that a lot. Like hip hop's like the more popular thing nowadays. I guess, mm-hmm. but it wasn't always that way. Right? No, well, I mean in, in, in North America it only last year became the more popular genre like over rock. Yeah. But that's not even necessarily the world. Like if yeah. you like look other places like you go to Norway metal oh, yeah. is the big oh, thing. For sure. Japan, metal is the big thing. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. It's different. I mean, hip-hop makes its waves, and especially it in does, countries, yeah. too. And especially if you're mentioning Japan, you can't England, Japan hip-hop's like, massive. Hip-hop, of course, right? Yeah, yeah like freaking um, Skepta and all that. Yeah. yeah. We and, a, yeah. yeah. Well, today, we're, like, we're looking for a new drummer right now because we're telling you how our other drummer quit. Um, Austin was telling me today how he wants to find a hip hop drummer. I want to find a hip hop. Just give a little, more, give a little more of that vibe. Oh, yeah. Tight vibe. You, you get a dude who can do like. <laughs> yeah, you know, you should ask stuff. people yeah. that if yeah. anybody this is another thing wants to, to try to out to yeah. be Twenty yeah. First Avenue's new hip hop drummer. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 Anything's possible. I mean, yeah. if they got the dude from Anthrax to drum for fucking Public Enemy one day. I mean, freaking, <laughs> pu- freaking Public Enemy one day, and you know, it's definitely possible for anyone to do that, right? Yeah. Especially hip hop drummer. There you go. I like hip hop drumming. I think it sounds—it's kind of like funky. I think a little bit. Like that's yeah. where that's the roots come from. Funk and blues, right? Yeah. Yeah. Blues is blues is rock. Like, that's what it is. Blues right? is rock with overdrive and passion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's sure. what Eventually it is. Eventually, you just slowed it down, and then you know, like, like rock is blues. Yeah. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah. Yeah. I might have said it backwards, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So tell us, uh, tell you, Leo here emceed the um, the Beauty and the Beats beauty pageant and hip hop show that we had last Valentine's. 
So tell us how that went. Um, went pretty good. My first time ever emceeing anything. <laughs> first time I think I kept my language as clean as I could. Um, <laughs> I was wondering about that for this actually. Yeah. I was like, how do I like where do I you get rid of the rule by accident? But <laughs> oh, is there a rule? that was a no no. Anyways, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's in terms of emceeing, first show I think it went well. I mean, we had a fairly decent crowd, about half of what we expected, but it was still enough and. People were making noise, everyone cheered for the girls. It was a good performers. show. That's yeah. awesome. It was good. Everyone gave us a lot of support and got us on our way there. Our sponsors, all the people do running around doing the legwork, getting our props, you know, we owe a lot of people. That was a, a very long too. list of at the end of the show. But got a lot <laughs> sponsors, of people thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it went good. I mean sucks. These guys are supposed to have a show that day too, right? But yeah. You yeah. ended up rescheduling that for when? Exactly. Well, yeah, when's the next one? So March 30th? Now? March 30th. Well, our next 23rd. March our next 23rd. show is on March 23rd. Yeah. Show is March 23rd. That's in Lethbridge here at the, at the uh, Slice. Slice Bar and yeah. Grill. Yeah, uh, probably 8 p.m. or whatever. Yeah. Any <laughs> tickets? Any cover charge? Anything like that? Cover charge. Cover charge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I haven't decided on a price yet. Five or ten dollars. Yeah. Not too right. crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So 21st Avenue Band, everyone, on uh, March, 23rd. March, 23rd March 23rd at the Slice. The Slice. 8 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah. 7 p.m.? 8 p.m.? 8 p.m.? Probably 8 p.m. Yeah. So yeah. just $5 or $10 cover charge if you want to come see them yeah. live. You've heard them. They're really good, right? I'm super and stoked for that show, yeah. actually. Well, yeah. it'll be a little different. We might have a bassist and a drummer by then. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I don't, I don't usually play the drums. I'm sitting here on, on the cajon right now. I usually play the guitar. He mm -hmm. plays either bass, bass or guitar or, or guitar, yeah. nothing. Just the vocals. So if you want to <laughs> audition to be their drummer, or you know. Bassist. What's your Facebook slash. page? Twen uh, Facebook.com Facebook uh, Facebook slash 21st uh, Avenue. 21st Avenue Band. Band. Yeah, band and then our Instagram, band. Instagram is 21 Ave Band. Yeah. yeah. Difference. We should make those the same, I think. Probably. Probably would be better. But it is what it is. Instagram 21 Ave So <laughs> for Facebook, it's 21st Avenue, Avenue Band. Band. And then, and then yeah, Instagram, Instagram is 21 Ave Band. Yeah. Shorter. Oh yeah, you gotta make it the same so that people will yeah. just type so it in. Yeah, works for both. Yeah, yeah, be nice. yeah. Twenty first. What twenty one? Twenty first or twenty one? Twenty first. Twenty first, right? Yeah. Twenty yeah. first Avenue is the name. Is the name of the band, <laughs> but like you know, <laughs> for your at, like, handle, where did that name come that. from? Um. Well, uh, it's where we first jammed. Was twenty first yeah. Avenue in Coldale, where I that's where I live. Uh -huh. I used to live. Actually, I don't live there. I don't go knocking on that door. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, many doors in that there's many doors in that street. That's right. We didn't specify yeah. the, the house. <laughs> <laughs> one one four. There you go. Twenty first yeah. Avenue. Twenty first Avenue. Go give it a knock. See. Pull a Mac DeMarco. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mac DeMarco album. At the very end yeah. of it, he just like gives his like like complete address. And He's like, just come on by. I'll make you a cup of coffee. And he was talking about like how these people just kept showing up. He's, he has since then moved. So, like, <laughs> I, would, I would move too. <laughs> <laughs> he probably just like thought like I'm just some like low name, like no low indie name. You know, mm -hmm. no one's gonna actually come over. But Honestly, people actually came over and probably. like you know? wanted to come over you and hang know. out for you coffee. You never know how things are gonna turn out. So yeah. I'll go for some, I'll go for a coffee. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm from coffee and Mac DeMarco, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> like shout out to Mac DeMarco. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Mac DeMarco. Yeah. But yeah, Canadian. Yeah, we met in Coldo. Mm -hmm. uh, Reese is the from you. Vauxhall. You're from Enchant. Two of Coldwell. you and Reese are yeah. the three of you. The three met of us. in Coldo. That's well, well, like, I met Dayton before uh, I met Reese, yeah. He was playing a, just like an acoustic set at yeah. a bar. There, and like, hey, a bar that will not be named. I was underage at the time. Uh-oh. <laughs> you're not supposed to play in bars at that, uh, uh, when you're underage. Right now, that's the law. You're not even supposed to be in the bar when you're not supposed to be in the bar. Well, you yeah. used to be able to play in them, but yeah. not anymore. And then yeah. at the end of the show, he goes, uh, you didn't tell me you were underage. I go, well, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> he got kind of mad at me, but it was whatever. <laughs> yeah. So tell us the story. So, well, I just got back from this vacation. My mom was like, hey, come. She was just at this bar already. She was like, hey, come to this bar. This guy's playing. Like, uh, Maybe like you guys can jam later yeah. or something like that. I was like, okay, come on out. And like, to me, he like, it, he struck me like as, I think it's because he was playing at this older bar, but he struck me as like this like folk player, like just straight up. Well, I was playing a little folk. I was country, playing like Ed Sheeran and like some country songs and yeah. like I played a, <laughs> played a couple of Johnny Cash like, tunes. Well, this might be okay. Like we yeah. get into that like, yeah. you know, we could kind of get into that Mumford and Sons, you know, of Monsters and Men yeah. kind of <laughs> hipster genre. I'm just like, I'll be all right. Yeah. Whatever. 
And then, like, he started telling me about, like, who the people he likes. I'm like, I didn't get that vibe. <laughs> well, when you're playing acoustic, you kind of, yeah. like, stick to those a little yeah, bit. I I this, yeah, also Jake Bug is in that. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me. He said I sound yeah. like Jake Blood Bug. You don't know, I might even Jake and Bug. And then the, two, really see the two of you just hit it off right away? Yeah, well, like, that, yeah. that day after my set, he was like, can I jam with you? He brought his amp up, had his yeah. amp in his car, yeah. and we jammed there for everybody for a bit. Yep, and yeah. we invited the... Invited my drummer over for a jam, and then we just started playing, and in a sense... So you were both playing, but individually, and then you decided yeah, to yeah, play yeah. together. So me and, yeah. yeah, me and the drummer have been playing since, like, grade 8 or something like that, so... Yeah, we just always just played. We played at random community events and things like that. <laughs> Only, like, once or twice did we have vocals. I sang for it. Mm. We just did cover songs and stuff like that. Mm. Never had our own music. Mm. Did improvised jams all the time, so it was nice to have that, like, kind of click that we had between each other, and then for us to meet... Uh, Austin the first time was like awkward, but that's just with any new mm. new jam session, you know. Sometimes and yeah. eventually, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's just sometimes natural. it's perfect. Just perfect. so Austin's the writer mostly, but the, you yeah, you yeah, add mostly. your own lyrics to every now and then. Uh, right? well, no, not yet, not but we lyrics. tried. <laughs> <laughs> like for the most part, I write the I write the songs, the chords. Dayton does like his lead parts and his guitar parts for the most part. Like I'll write like the main chord structure, or, like maybe a riff mm -hmm. here and there, but like yeah. Yeah. And then I write the songs and we, I present them to the band. And a lot of the time they're super different from what they end up though. And that's the thing. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to like, I don't want to not be jamming with Dayton or writing with Dayton ever. Because like, I think I would just hate my songs. <laughs> I just wouldn't <laughs> like my music. Like it would be good. I'd be like, okay, this is cool. It's folk. I guess it's kind of boring. But like, as soon as we, he like puts his like lead bits in there, it gives it this whole new world. It's a whole new style all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's a different song completely. I guess if you're only looking at your own stuff, it's like yeah. more You need it. You need somebody else to listen to yeah. that and go, I hear it this way. Let me change something about Absolutely, yourself. for sure. You know? Absolutely, yeah. 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 But yeah. Like so that's somebody's input, you know, yeah. Yeah, to and make that, it better. Not mm -hmm. that it, I mean, it's good to start with, but to make no, it better, better, right? It yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to have somebody else. Like, that's that's kind of just the way, like, I, like that's our method to writing. I guess everybody's got their way, but, like, yeah, I don't, I don't like to... I guess, like, Freddie Mercury's, like, in the movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, yeah. he, he complains. He's like, they did exactly what I told them to do about the new band when he leaves... Uh, queen in the movie, and he goes. They did exactly what they wanted to do. No pushback from Roger and no uh, rewrites from Brian. It's like you need that. You need somebody else to listen to your music and mm -hmm. go. Well, that's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, that that is missing something. Like mm -hmm. the we have the one song bleeding from my lip. You'll hear it later. The way we're gonna play it is because we have acoustic guitar and John Bay is gonna be like the original. Mm -hmm. Just kind of because I yeah, wrote it on acoustic. Yeah, but that's but like, like our heaviest song. But like our like Reese, yeah. um, he's a lot more metal influenced, right? So he came in and he's just like. I think this like needs some like heavy guitar on it just because we, the way we had written it, it just seemed a little empty. And then obviously he brings in like a bit more of a heavier drum aspect, and we're just like yeah. we love the way the song turned out. Yeah, and I really enjoy it actually. Yeah, I ended up kind of screaming at the end of that one. <laughs> yeah. When we do it live, especially like his drums get so loud that yeah. part of like oh my lord. Yeah, it's you our finale <laughs> song every time. It's our finale it's song. Like, yeah. yeah, we it's like to like get everything really crazy, running around. Reese is just hitting it pretty hard. Yeah. Just, you know what that song that you just played though? Like, I mean, I've listened to it on the, on mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. and it actually like sounds better live. That's the pulp, right? Yeah. Most of our stuff should sound like at least more exciting and like. I mean, it I sounds mean, like, good online yeah, too, it is. but it's just the you energy, know, like right? oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. just the nature of music. Is when you start I think music's live. always better live. As long as the it's long as long as the singers can kind of sound like they do, you know, in the recording. It's yeah, actually it's not, always the, not, always, not the always the case. Not always the case. Not always the case. Usually, I, like I strive to usually sound pretty close to what our recording is. Like. You saw Sugar Ray live. Like Sugar Ray right? live. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, I'm, no. Yeah. Bob <laughs> <laughs> right. no. well, Dylan, I heard, also is not very good. Though. Well, he's fitting up there now a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Eh? And he's never the most amazing singer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I like him, though. <laughs> Big Bob Dylan guy. But, yeah. So, um, would you like? Would you guys like to play another song for us? Yeah, for sure. sure. We'll play yeah. the slower one now. Yeah, we're gonna do yeah. the, uh, the slower one. This and what's the, the title of this? Song? Uh, this is Numb. It's all, it's Numb. on the album. It's acoustic on the album. Just me Should playing my acoustic and singing. The backstory right. of this song, <laughs> like why we wrote it, or like why we put it on the album. Why it's on the album? Oh yeah. So we uh, we wrote and we had another song on the album called Derailed, and uh, yeah, it, which wasn't jiving, and we were listening to the recording and. Uh, Unfortunately, and, and it could have could been a number of reasons, but like the drums, the snare was off in the recording, mm -hmm. and it was at the end of our recording, and we're not very rich, <laughs> unfortunately, yet. You know, fingers crossed. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, <laughs> in there, yeah. Yeah, you can change that. 
Um, <laughs> but so we, we were like, we really can't have like, we can't re-record this whole song. We'd have to re-record the whole song. And he, uh, the guy uh, Quentin Visca, the guy who recorded us, he was like, well, you know what, you can come in do like an acoustic song or something like that. Maybe put that on the album. We're like, you know what, that's a really great idea. We'll just do that and we'll save this one for another album. You know. Okay. And then, yeah. So I, I had the song in my back pocket for a while. I didn't know how he, how I wanted to use it or. Originally, I was thinking it would be a lot more with the band, but as an acoustic, mm -hmm. it, I thought it worked nicely, so. All right. Yeah, we'll Let's hear it. Yeah. Down her street every morning, watches the sun rise. She searches for wisdom, searches inside. She drinks the number pain inside. Fighting with her Twenty-first 
Avenue Band. You know, I was gonna say those riffs kind of reminded me of uh, "Saying Ain't So" by Weezer a bit. Actually. Yeah, that's why. Actually, when he first when he first plays that, I'm like, "Oh, say it ain't so." <laughs> yeah, I guess with, the, with the hammer on of the chord yeah. there, yeah, no, definitely, I could see that yeah. for sure. Talk to us about that story, the story behind that song. Oh, um, that one's uh, that one's like one of those ones where I kind of just like kind of picked a story. So it's like, it's about. Uh, it's about a, it's about a woman who uh, you know kind of has problems dealing with her her inner demons. You know she kind of doesn't have a lot of people, and then she uh, has maybe a drinking problem, you know, or a drug addiction, and she just she has to find some way to keep herself numb to not have to. But she's kind of like I got to take a control of this, you know. They don't control me, and that was like mm-hmm. why I you know I amp it up at that part too, because it's like I'm screaming a little bit, like. You Is know, this someone you personally back know up. or something? It's me. <laughs> yeah, Dave's, Dave's, as you know, uh, uh, an alcoholic female. Right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so it was about dating, you know. Must be a little I am so enlightened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one thing you didn't know about us. You know, hair on the chin, you know. That. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I suppose, like, I got, uh, I had, uh, I grew up, I had lots of, I had a couple of family members who uh, maybe drank a lot and things like that so mm-hmm. I kind of you know maybe it wasn't necessarily uh, that aspect wasn't about a woman but I, I find it easier as a man to sing about women <laughs> a little bit you know unless I'm talking about myself but like I, I didn't really feel like that you know I, I don't have that problem so because I guess like you know kind of like as a man you know you have a you have that um, prince charming kind of tendency, sure like that's you're kind you know, of taking that you're like you're trying to be like yeah, yeah damsel the knight shining armor I'm a, I'm a damsel in distress shining, kind yeah, of shining armor. Yeah. look to it yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe, maybe. Like, that's the point. So maybe some girl would be like, hey, 21st Avenue. Well, I, I understand. Or maybe, some, maybe somebody is feeling that. And then, and yeah, then they can, they it's can very, it's very inspirational and very insightful, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You know, because a, of, a, lot of, a lot of people go through that. Yeah, they do. It's know, pretty, it's it doesn't have to be somebody no. you know. No, no, yeah. You know, you hear it in the news. You hear it, like, yeah. online yeah. or mm-hmm. on TV. And they're just even, like, neighbors mm-hmm. that are around you or just... Yeah. You know, she's going through this. She's going. Yeah. Through, he's going through that. Like, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think music for the most part, you know, like they're. So we're re- reaching out to. I, mean, I want to relate yeah. with people, and that's like uh, most of the time I'm trying to find things that I relate with people. But you know, I can't do that every single song. So you know, I yeah. To, mm-hmm. You know, maybe more like maybe from my outsized perspective on somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah. Something that like a lot of people uh, can relate to. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it's common. It's yeah, common it's problem. common. Mm-hmm. It's a common yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. So um, on uh, March 23rd, the 21st Avenue Band is going to yeah. be at the Slice, 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. Um, doors <laughs> are only going to be uh, do- uh, $5 or $10. So if you if you want to come see them live, be there at the Slice yeah. on March 23rd. What day is that? That is March 23rd. It's, that, it's, a, it's Saturday. a Saturday. Saturday. So yeah. it's a Saturday. So it's a Saturday, you have so no excuse You'll have a lot of fun, get drunk. Go home, go to church the next day, whatever. <laughs> yeah. We hung over in church, but like, yeah. worth it. Come have a good time. Yeah, we love. I, I we'd love to. Ha- we love having everybody partying with people. Mm. We need to get Dayton a, a wireless kit for his guitar, so oh, we can yeah. go chill with the crowd. Or there's a fifty foot cable. Or fifty, 50 foot, foot cable. I feel like it'd be complicated though. <laughs> yeah, but you might like trip on something. What do you mean, <laughs> chill with the crowd? Like like play guitar, or go walk out and like. Well, like oh, and okay. Dance so yeah, yeah, you're gonna go and walk like around with your guitar. Venues, yeah, smaller like venues. That. He's able to do it sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. They like doing that. I don't know. Cool. Like so you don't always people. have to be on. The yeah, stage I don't like feeling or... so separated from people. You know. Yeah. Like and when I talk in between, uh, I try to keep it pretty calm, pretty relaxed. Like I'm not like sitting there screaming like, uh, "You guys want to rock and all that kind of stuff." <laughs> <laughs> but, like you know, I try to make a joke here and there, and I try to be like you know with everybody. I like to be in the moment with people, mm-hmm. and that's like. That's just, it's just, I feel at home when I'm like that. Yeah. yeah it's, my, it's my favorite part. Yeah, because people feel mm-hmm. that you're, you know, you're actually singing. They're actually, well, when they sing, you're singing them. with them, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 You're, I, yeah, you're sharing music with, with them. You know, yeah, you're not right. just mm-hmm. performing for them. Or you at know, them. Like, or at yeah. them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I live for those moments when I'm on stage and I, I get to sing with the crowd. But that's like, mm-hmm. yeah. It's my, yeah, I'll never forget any of them. I hope not. And it's just like. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. I feel so good. Like when we sing "Mama" by the Glorious Sons, oh, yeah. people love that one. They, dan- they sing. That one's like such a jammer. I love that song. Like the whole and dance singing part. that with yeah. people. Oh, it's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I like the whole dance competitions on that song too. Yeah, we got dance competitions. You know, you, you can win a shirt, shirt, right? Yeah. That's what we do oh, with yeah. shirts. Yeah. Why That's not? fun. 
Yeah. So they actually go up on stage and then they do oh. it. They don't go up on the stage. They go up on the you know the, the dance floor. The dance. On the dance and then floor. we gotta like decide who wins. Yeah. <laughs> How do you decide? I don't know. Whoever stood up the most, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a little. It's a little crazy when yeah. some people go up and they'll, they'll like be with partners and then you go, "Well, do I hand out two shirts now?" Because <laughs> you go, "Guys are both." Give them an extra large. Yeah. Give them an extra large. They can wear it like a snuggly when it's yeah. cold and, wa yeah. and they're yeah. watching That's TV. Horrible. Oh or they're watching your I love videos. That. Someone's got to do that. We'll take a photo, post it on the page. I think it'd be good. Yeah. Do you actually have an extra large? Shirt? Yeah, we got extra large, yeah, extra large yeah. We have oh, yeah. them there. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did, I did see yeah. We didn't buy there. smalls for that one show because, I don't know, cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> we thought, you know what, people could still fit in a medium, you know, maybe tie it to the side. It could be like yeah. style or crop it yeah. or something. It is, it is style. Oversized shirts. Oversized shirts, yeah. yeah. I think that we can make it. We'll make it a thing. I think grunge is all about oversized. Oversized clothing, and I think we gotta bring that back. Oversized, oversized flannel, yeah. big jeans. I don't know. I'm not gonna bring back big pants. I don't think. I can't. <laughs> no. But like the oversized everything else, I might. I like. I like the grunge era. I think bring we back bring the it plastic back. tips. That's, That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking more Kurt Cobain, long hair. You know what I mean? Like I like that kind of stuff. I'm told I'm not allowed to grow my hair out, but yeah. Bell bottom jeans. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> that's like even before your time. That's like that's a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We got we got we got friends of ours do that decadent phase. They're a good band to check out. Band. Yeah, they want hippie rock or something. Or a little what? bit, you know. They, they play they some. Play some uh, they did a Doors tribute show a little oh, bit ago. Yeah. It was really good. You know. Still only like. Uh, they like they play like a couple. Maybe oh. they're into like Tame Impala or some jazz like that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just play like kind of like old folk rock music. Okay. Just like a what's bit. The, they do uh, Hey Joe sometimes. It's really good. What's the people that do somebody to love? Somebody I think it's, yeah. Who's that? I think Blondie. No. They do that song, and they do it with Pat Patsy Pine or... No, I don't know. Patsy Pine. Dude, I don't know if we need to sit on it. People in the comments, if you know, if you guys know <laughs> who, uh, who plays that song, uh, please let us know. <laughs> don't you want There you go. <laughs> they, 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 they do it. Who the sang that? I almost want to say Stevie Nicks, but I don't know. Oh, Just I that know. era, just like the general era. I don't think it's Stevie, Stevie Nicks, Nicks no. no. So for all, for, um, just, I just wanted to say for, for you out there who um, haven't heard of Leo Manan, he's also the host of Cooking with Leo. And it airs every first Wednesday of the month. And um, for your next uh, episode, who who's gonna be there with you? Good question. These two for sure. <laughs> yeah, the I dish, made it happen. The dish is still a mystery, but they're gonna get the. Oh, okay. That's the thing I wanted to know because I wanted to like. Are you gonna like blindfold us the whole time and then cook and just ask questions? <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that what you mean by mystery? It'd be difficult for you to film it if we're that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I watched the cooking show the one time. The food looked so good. I was like, you know what, Dayton? We're gonna force oh. ourselves onto the cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually I film it, so at I least I can do. He always gives me food at the end. That's like a sponsored plug, at it. least. So yeah. might as well have a happy show up. But hopefully, we <laughs> we find somebody else who can film it, so both of you could be on it. Yeah. Right? That'll be so much fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We know a couple people maybe could do it. Yeah. Maybe Brandon. Yeah, maybe Brandon. Brandon. Maybe you can take turns putting in the spices and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. something like that. You yeah. can be like. Mm -hmm. He could tell you what to do, and then you'd be actually all cooking the food. Just a selfie stick the whole time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be on March first. Yeah. That's gonna be aired on March first. I don't know when we'll set up the date to film it, but it should be aired on March first. Tomorrow. We'll be cooking tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Sounds like a good time. I'm hungry now. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Dayton Jens was the videographer of uh, the last cooking, Le the last two cooking with Leo episodes, which mm -hmm. was really good. Both of them did a good job. Yeah. I'm so proud. Yeah, videography is a huge passion of mine. I went to school mm -hmm. here in college for media. I love just filming, using it as an art form, just yeah. experimenting with colors, angles, all that kind of stuff. It just gets me really jived up. <laughs> it's just funny because, mm -hmm. like, you talk to like most people, you're like, "Look at this shot," and they're like, "What they're focusing on is what's in the shot, not how the shot actually looks." And they're just like, what's that? It's just a golf cor golf cart. Yeah. It's a it's a tree. I'm like, but look how beautiful the tree is. <laughs> <laughs> look at the nice color. Yeah, that. that's the thing. Totally. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If there was one thing that really helped me understand that sort of thing, it was cooking school in and of itself, like especially in re relation mm. to photography and videography yeah, too, absolutely. right? Like, so you, you say colors and angles and stuff too, <laughs> yeah. right? Like that's what I was trying to get with the food last time, cutting in all the different shapes and stuff too, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because like, it's like you say to everyone else, it's just food. Okay. And it's all just different yeah. colors and shapes. That and show like, was so yeah. colorful. But like to you, it's like, oh, well, this one's got like a 50 millimeter angle camera yeah. lens. And this one's got with a drone yeah. shot or something. Yeah. And for me, it's like, oh, well, he flambéed this. He sautéed this. He 
he, you know, he shipping out of these ones, oh, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, to everyone else, that's just jargon. But, like, to you, that's your world. To me, that's my world, right? Absolutely. And, like, yeah, that's one, lost on me, the videographer. Stuff. I know. Right? <laughs> I am like I don't see it at all. I can't. I can't look at something. Go. I need this angle. I'm a huge fan also of this retro movement that's going on. Like the it's called the RGB split, where everything is like red, green, and uh, blue. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's like that sort of like washed out sort of yeah. style. Yeah. Almost, right? It looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. You have like that chromatic aberration on the yeah, and everything like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've been I've been seeing a lot of that with like cyberpunk stuff lately too. So like all those fan films for like all the futuristic stuff and like yeah. Blade Runner. Cyberpunk's kind of big on us. Like that's kind of what our character is on the. Uh, Oh. A little bit. She's a little cyberpunk. She's got the glasses. Yeah. Let's just grab one and show... Typical dark action. Grab one and grab one. I think I cut across the shot here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, uh, yeah. you have this Mad Max looking dude with like... Mad Max looking dude a little bit. With like the Supreme the mask come, on we there. Kept, we keep getting Can his, you uh, see it? Can we... Bring it closer? Bring it closer. So... to put it right in front of the camera thing. Anyways, if you come to our shows, we sell these at our shows. They're 15 bucks a piece. Um... 12 bucks. 12 or 15. We don't know. Probably 12. Depends what you can have. I think 15 is a little much. You bring enough cash. Bring some, bring some, bring some loonies, money. you know? It's it's a good buy. I, I bought one of those and. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're good don't songs. spend your money on the VLTs. Yeah. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Shout, out to, <laughs> Shout out to Brandon. Brandon Fisher. Brandon, Brandon Fisher. Fisher. He's. Yeah, he did our album artwork. He gets really mad because everyone keeps commenting that it looks like the Gorillas. He's a huge Gorillas fan. And like he, everyone's like, this this gives me like gorillas vibe, and he's just oh, like, there's only, uh, there's only one of so them. Hard to add his own flavor. There's like the whole band. His, his flavor is in no. there. Yeah. But, uh, it's a guy with. It's a girl. It's a girl. She's, She's a girl. <laughs> a punk girl. A punk well, they'll girl. they'll know on the next one when she looks mm -hmm. a lot more like a girl. Yeah. With, yeah, with, we um, we kind of wanted to keep it a little bit uh, like people would figure it out later, but then when yeah. we got a the, gas mask. Yeah, oh. it's kind of like a, well, no, it's like a ski mask or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's kind of like a ski mask, mask. snowboard's mask. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like weird things. We just wanted to wear weird stuff. Okay. Like, why, like, why would you wear that every day? You would. <laughs> oh, so it's more tank girl than gorillas. That's what it is. I see. This well, is how Austin artist, looks yeah. like when he can't sleep at night. Yeah. Sitting so on the armchair. That's how I feel. Like, that's how I feel. Like, staring the at the TV yeah. with goons and goggles on. Thinking about what songs to write next. Yeah, that's it. This could be the In an empty song. room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Brandon Fisher. Mm -hmm. Great artwork. Great artwork. Awesome. Yeah. Just super talented. Yeah, when we sat down and we were like, what do we want? And we had, he had a book just full of drawings. And I went through and then I saw like the, like a, just a drawing of the face of this character. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I want this dude. And he was like, no, 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 no. That's a girl. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, so it's like, I don't think I'm really going to, I don't think we're really going to assign a sex to the character. Like, I think on some covers, uh, he might or she might be a, a boy or a girl. I don't think it would like no. maybe it'll 21st be 21st like, century, 21st whatever. Avenue, right? 21st <laughs> Avenue, 21st century, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever, right? Okay, before oh, keep, anything, keep everybody guessing. <laughs> before anything else, I'd just like to thank our uh, last show sponsors Jess FM, Jess GB, Interfaith Food Bank, Moreland Professional Projects, MPP Photography, B93.3 FM, Makeup Factor. Cat Panic Makeup Artist, Ram Entertainment, Angels Touch Beauty Spa, Lay's Nail Salon Downtown, Naturistas, Naturally New Beauty Shop, Light Bridge Images, Simply Delivery, Cujo's Custom Wood, Purely Inspired Academy of Beauty, and Hush Slash Fabitan. Come dine at Whitby's Fish and Chips, 866 Heritage Boulevard, Boulevard West. The best fish and chips in town. Special thanks to my good friend Danger of News 1130 Jack FM Vancouver and Whistler FM for voicing our B93 commercial. Um, so. I was hoping you were going to. John. So Mayer. now it's my turn to go through our sponsors. Yeah, for sure. John Mayer. Yeah. <laughs> if you watch this, uh, John Mayer does this like Instagram show. Uh, and, like he does it once a week. It's called Current Mood. Current Mood is a good show. His story of it. It's pretty funny. Like the guy. He does like fake advertisements. Yeah, yeah he does like <laughs> these fake sponsors. He'll whip out these like cards and he'll just be like, "Today's sponsor is sponsored by turning it off or turning it off and back on again." <laughs> if electronics having issues? Try turning them off and back on. Again. They're always like weird things like that. That's good. So they just all made up. Yeah, yeah. just random like. Yeah. Yeah. Random. I don't think it's going to get to that point with us. I'm sure we're going <laughs> to have real sponsors for a while. So we'll see. Oh, yeah, hey. There we go. 
I don't know if we'll have. Sp- I don't think we're gonna have sponsors anytime soon. <laughs> you know, so maybe I'll pull out, out a Gatorade on stage <laughs> <laughs> when I'm singing. <laughs> I like that. We gotta have sponsors. We play with like, and you tell everyone to drink there. Like to thank my sponsor when my I uh, the bar. when the I bar make butter sponsor. toast. I don't yeah. spread the butter. I melt it in the microwave first, <laughs> and then I pour it onto the toast. Yeah. Sponsor. <laughs> it's easier that. that way though is that what you do for it real? is yeah i put it in like a little cup i have like one of these like little teacups and i put like a little bit of butter in the microwave it yes. for 30 seconds then put the toast put the bread in the toaster and then pour it like you know when it's melted yeah. i don't know about that <laughs> um, <laughs> it works but like i think if you're, you're, i think you like toast like or something if your toast is hot gosh. It that, shouldn't matter. <laughs> like, that's how we do it, like, when we're at work or something. We have, like, a piece of toast, and we just have to do it super fast. You just grab the toast, grab, like, your brush, and then grab a little bit of the garlic butter for, like, that you normally just drip onto your steaks, but, like... Hmm. Uh, I love garlic butter. The oh, thing is, you have to watch yeah. for cross-contamination with that, so you have to make sure your brush is clean, I think, a lot of the time. So that's yeah. kind of t- tends to be a no-no unless you, like, re-grill the bread again. Hmm. Because if you use it on meat... That's the thing, right? So it doesn't usually happen. Like normally, some people might just grab a new brush if they're really sticklers about that, and you haven't had a steak the whole day. Especially if you use so it on would... like seafood, you know, like. Oh, you don't. You, you, don't, you don't. You don't usually mix anything with seafood with anything else. That's really the hard thing. <laughs> lobster, yeah. Yeah. steak. I like seafood. Is that what make it? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, he was thinking. Of, we were thinking. We were thinking about paella. She was thinking paella. I was thinking. I'm thinking. I don't really know what yet. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. that's cool with me. I've never had it. Like? It, it, it's, like it's like jambalaya, so it's like, you know, like rice and like tomatoes and all that kind of boiled together with seafood, with chicken, sausage, all mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That sounds good, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. Then you, at least you, you learn how to make it too, right? <laughs> if I make yeah. it, but yeah. yeah. Why? You're very I'm, much I'm a cart in right? front of the horse type of person. I mean, <laughs> actually said when I'm making it. <laughs> Oh, me too. A little bit. So yeah, right. of course, a little bit. That's the know. hard part. That's kind of gotten me into trouble my whole life, so I have to kind of keep on the look for it, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I just like to get excited about things. I know, right? Things, so. That's the yeah, hard part. Right. Yeah. But that's why, that's why I'm in the band. Kind of front of the horse a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I'll join your band. Why not? <laughs> hey, I got a band, but we just need, like a drummer and stuff now, and that's about it. Yeah. Got everything else. Yeah, it's good. Well, we still got people who can like oh, fill exactly in here next. Right. It's not like we can't do our shows. Oh, yeah, you can do yeah, the yeah. Tegan and Sarah or something. Just have like a different drummer all the time or like oh, I mean, drum that's sequencer. Ours, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we could, you know, we, we thought about like possibly being like a duo who just hires Black Keys. Yeah. Black, Black Keys, Black Keys it. Guitar, bass, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, guitar, or drums. Guitar, guitar drums. drums or something, yeah. Or bass drums like uh, Royal Blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another good, good band. Yeah, I love Royal Blood. Blood. Yeah. I, I yeah. saw them open for Queens of the Stone Age oh, last year. That was really good. That'd be so good. Yeah. I love, I love pretty sick. Blood. And Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah. Good. that's a good show. So um, would you guys like to invite people for to uh, uh, to your Facebook page and Instagram page again? Yeah. Yeah, so sure. Let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, Facebook page. If you want to come check us out, see what we're up to. Uh, we do post on our Facebook and our Instagram page. Our... Uh, our Facebook handle is this 21st Ave Band. 21st, 21st Avenue, Avenue Band. band. 21st Avenue. Yeah, 21st <laughs> Avenue Band. If you just search 21st Avenue and maybe put band at the end, you'll get uh, it. You'll find us. Yeah. Um, our Instagram? picture is this like a blue logo. It's a blue circle with a two one Ave in it. Um, our Instagram handler is at 21 Ave Band. That's the one I go to. You know, if you have Instagram, we mm-hmm. post Instagram. on that a little more frequently. For young. You know, videos videos and pictures. Videos, yeah. pictures, yeah. yeah videos. Little. It's art. It's art. Art, free advertising. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. shout outs, guys? Any shout outs? outs. Well, we shout out Quentin. Brandon Fisher. Mm-hmm. Quentin Biscuit, guy who, uh, guy who did our album. Did our album. Mm-hmm. Produced yeah. it, sort of, you know. Just us out with such it. a good year. It's yeah. Such a, such a great guy to work with, too. Yeah. So easy going late. Oh, he's super nice. Super, super cool. Nice. Yeah, he was like, we, we, did, we, weren't, we didn't go by hours. We went by song as far as our payments go, and that was really, really helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was really nice. Any yeah. shout outs to you? Shout out all of our great performers from the show last week. Shout out my boy D Nut. Shout out RG Cliche. <laughs> hey D Nut. JPB Psychonauts. Hey, shout out all you guys saving our show, making things happen. Thanks, y'all. Psychonauts are pretty cool. Oh. We played with them one time. You guys know them, yeah. Yeah. Well, we were playing. Yeah. We were we were at the slice doing a jam. Yeah. And we were. I was playing this like a slap, slap bass riff that I wrote. Yeah. And they were like. We like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a song we think could fit over it, and so then they had us play with them while uh, while they rap. That's really dope. Like one of our riffs. We, we should do that, song. do that song. Yo, shout yeah. out Poppy and Jerry. You know? Thank you. Yeah, we'd love that. We'd, yeah. you know, do that. 
do something with them. I think they're pretty good. We enjoyed them. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. They're really good. I actually really like them. Um, yeah. They're nice influences, and they're always good at, like, talking yeah. about They always, like, give a lot of knowledge when you talk to them, I find. Oh, yeah. They're really good at the whole being OG thing, you know. Being OG? Like, you know, like, you're older, <laughs> you're, you're seniors, just giving you advice, like, hey, this is how you rap, this is what to talk about, don't be whack, you know. That's don't be whack, eh? What advice? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much that would go with us. We'll, we'll try not to be whack, though. <laughs> I mean, obviously, don't do the Gene Simmons, you know, no face makeup, no pyrotechnics, I guess. Uh, like no, no hair metal. I will use pyrotechnics one day. Pyrotechnics. Okay, pyrotechnics yeah. fine, but no, no cat, lasers no are happening. Can't make up. You don't know that. No yet. star on your It eye. might happen. It might happen. You never you know. know. No I extra might. long tongue Gene Simmons. How yeah, about that? I might do like the uh, Nikki Six. <laughs> <laughs> Black. You know, no, uh, you without the pants on, just oh, on the you know. Uh, yeah, tube sack. No sad. biting birds' heads. You gotta have your bait, like your bass or whatever. Like, <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I got the confidence to do that. Yeah. I'm, got, I'm not gonna too uh, shit on stage. Hayes said he was gonna do it and perform in like a Borat style banana hammock once. <laughs> we still haven't seen anything on that, so who knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> so you can watch us on JessFM.ca, Jess TV. Um, uh, Facebook is facebookcom slash JessFM. Or on Instagram, YouTube, and you can also download the apps on iPhone and um, on uh, the Google Store. So um, we are going to say goodbye and good night, and we will leave you with a song from the 21st Avenue Band. This has been Julia Martinez, Leo Manahan, and Austin Bowden, Austin Bowden and, and Dayton Jens. Thank you for watching the Pumped Up Show. Gasping and wheezing, I bleeding from my lip and the cigarette I smoke is still in my mouth, still it. All these fights are the same. Fear resonates through my body, being cut as the man sees right through me. All these fights. Have me changing, I'm no longer the man I was. For me, had another dream.
to you. I'll deal with the man who was mouthing out to you. you count the seconds, it'll take no time, it's true. Just in time for you to buy us both around to now, love. Thank you for coming. Glad you guys were able to.